Well, hello there, folks. Today, we're discussing the third chapter of Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus. So in the second half of chapter two, which we didn't quite get around to looking at on Friday, Paul discussed how the Jews and the Gentiles have been united by Christ. Historically, theologically, socially even, there were just so many differences between Jews and Gentiles. But by coming to faith in Christ, all those differences were set aside. In fact, they were outweighed by the one chief similarity. So in verse 19, as Paul addresses these Gentile converts in Ephesus, he says, actually, you're no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. And this is such an important message, even for the church of today. It just does not matter what your background is, what your race is, what your skin color is, what education you've had, what job you're in, how much wealth your family has. None of it is relevant when it comes to membership of the church of Jesus Christ. There's no background checks and government searches. There's no interviews or interrogations. The only thing that matters is whether or not you believe in Jesus. And if you do, then that's it. You're a part of this family, this body. And this is a work of the Lord, Paul says. It's not by human design. So the Lord is the one who is building his church here on earth. And as Paul says, it's to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. So that's chapter two. So then into chapter three, Paul continues to assert this very truth. He's sort of building upon it. And he wants the Ephesian Gentile believers to be of absolutely no doubt that they are just as much a part of the global church as any Jewish Christians are. So he says in verse 6, Through the gospel the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, that's the Jewish community, members together of one body and sharers together in the promise in Christ Jesus. So there is no distinction. The only thing that counts, as I said, is faith in Christ. The church is to be all-inclusive, everyone welcome. And significantly then, this is not just Paul's opinion here. He makes that clear. It's not just something that he thinks is a good idea. You know, I sort of think this is for the best. He's saying the Lord is the one who thinks this is for the best. The Lord is the one who had always intended for this precise thing to be the case. Paul explains in verse 3 then, this is the mystery that had been made known by revelation from God himself. He says it wasn't made known to people in previous generations, but it is now, and it's through the Holy Spirit of God himself. So occasions like Pentecost, for example, that moment when all the apostles gathered and the Spirit was poured out upon uh, the believers there, that clearly showed that God's blessing was upon them, was upon the work that they were doing, and was upon the Gentile believers just as much as any Jewish believers as well. And so in verses 7 to 13, Paul emphasizes that his calling to preach the gospel to the Gentiles, to declare the good news to them, that they are included in God's family, that very calling is from the Lord Jesus himself. There is heavenly weight behind this. It hasn't just been kind of made up recently by the apostles, or it's not just sort of an add-on to get church attendance up. It's the plan and will of the Lord God Almighty. And Paul even hints at the fact that he has suffered personal loss for the sake of this calling. He's, so we know from the book of Acts, he's been stoned, he's been chased out of towns, he's been attacked by mobs, he's been arrested, in prison, beaten, abused, you name it, he's gone through it. And it's almost everywhere he goes, but he still refers to his calling as a grace of the Lord. He sees this as his life's calling, his life's purpose. This is how he is serving his God and therefore he is more than happy to do it. So he says in verse 13 to the Gentiles, you shouldn't feel bad or discouraged by any suffering I'm going through for your sake because that means it's not in vain. They're for your glory, for your salvation and ultimately it's to carry out the will and purpose of the Lord on earth. So Paul finishes off this chapter then by praying for his dear Ephesian brothers and sisters, these Ephesian Gentile converts who have put their faith in Christ. And this prayer is incredible. How often do we pray these kind of prayers over one another? 
How often do we pray them over our church family, over our friends, over our relatives? Because, you know, it's one thing to pray for someone's illness or someone's broken leg or whatever the case. But this is a theological prayer for the benefit of another person's faith, another person's soul. This is a prayer with eternal consequence rather than temporal. And listen, I'm not saying it's bad to pray for someone who is ill or has broken their leg or whatever. Of course, I'm not saying that. We absolutely can and we absolutely should pray when people we love are sick or ill or are hurting. But I'm simply asking, how often do we pray for the heart and the soul of a person? Because the truth is, our temporal issues, as serious and important as they are, they are far outweighed by the eternal issues, the eternal destination of a person's soul. So Paul's deepest prayer, coming right from his heart for these believers, these brothers and sisters in the Lord, well, it's three things. Firstly, that Jesus would dwell in their hearts by the power of the Spirit. Secondly, that they would grasp the grandeur, the immensity of the love that Christ has for them. And then thirdly, that they would know this love right to their very core in order that they would just be simply overflowing with God. What an amazing prayer to pray that Jesus would dwell in their hearts, that his love for them would not only be grasped, but fully known. May these words be the words we pray over one another much more often alongside those important prayers for health and guidance and so on. So folks, that's us for today. Join us tomorrow then as we move into chapter four. Until then, as ever, God bless. Mm -hmm.